What is air? Fundamentally, it is a mixture of gases. This mixture of gases also contains relatively low levels of vapors and aerosol particles, many of which we consider pollutants of the air. A gas may be defined as a formless state of matter which at normal room temperatures and pressures has low density and viscosity and readily and uniformly distributes itself throughout its container. In contrast, a vapor may be defined as the gaseous form of a substance which, at the same time, coexists as a solid or liquid at normal temperatures and pressures. We consider gaseous forms of water, gasoline, or nail polish to be vapors, whereas oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide are considered to be gases. Dry air, air without any water vapor in it, is composed of about 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% the noble gas argon. Carbon dioxide comprises about 0.04% of the atmosphere, or 400 parts per million and its concentration is rising due to emissions from human activities. No other gas is present in uncontaminated dry air at a concentration greater than 100 parts per million, or 0.01%. The composition of dry air is fairly uniform throughout Earth's atmosphere. Water vapor is not a part of dry air. However, it is, of course, a prominent part of our atmosphere. Our human experience tells us that the water content of air is highly variable. During the winter, many of us experience dry, cracked skin due to the relative absence of water vapor. In the summer, on the other hand, we experience high humidity that decreases our comfort level, makes it difficult for our sweat to evaporate, and contributes to heat-related illnesses. The amount of water vapor in air can be so low as to be almost negligible, or it can be so high that it is the third most prevalent component of air in a given location after only nitrogen and oxygen. Let's take a look at some examples of the amount of water vapor in the air on a percentage basis in some different atmospheric conditions. Our first set of conditions is a temperature of minus 30 degrees Celsius, minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit, at 70% relative humidity. Relative humidity is the amount of water vapor present in air expressed as a percent of the amount that would saturate the air, the point at which dew would begin to form at the same temperature. So, at minus 30 degrees Celsius and 70% relative humidity, water vapor would make up less than 0.03% of the air. This is less than the amount of carbon dioxide that would be present. This situation occurs regularly in northern Minnesota, for example, during the middle of winter. At a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, 86 degrees Fahrenheit, and 70% relative humidity, water vapor would be about 3% of the atmosphere, higher than argon. This condition is common in Minnesota and many other places during the summer. In an industrial drying process, you may have very high temperatures with significant amounts of water vapor present. For example, at 90 degrees Celsius, 194 degrees Fahrenheit, and 20% relative humidity, water vapor would comprise 16% of the air, nearly as much as oxygen. Air comprises Earth's atmosphere. The structure of the atmosphere is complex, separated into layers across which vertical mixing is reduced. These layers are largely defined by shifts in temperature gradients through the atmosphere, as shown in the figure by the red line which is a plot of average atmospheric temperature on the horizontal axis against elevation in kilometers or miles on the vertical axes. Air pressure decreases as one travels upward through the atmosphere because the force due to gravity of the atmosphere that is above is reduced. The lowest layer of the atmosphere is the troposphere, extending only about 10 to 15 kilometers or about 6 to 9 miles from the surface of the Earth. This is the zone in which people live. In the troposphere, the reduction in air pressure with elevation is reflected in a general decrease of air temperature with elevation, as shown in the figure. The proximity of the lowest part of the troposphere to the heat-absorbing surface of the Earth also contributes to the temperature profile. Relative to other parts of the atmosphere, air in the troposphere experiences rapid vertical mixing. Above the troposphere is the stratosphere, which contains the ozone layer that protects life on Earth by absorbing harmful ultraviolet radiation produced by the sun. 
The stratosphere extends to about 50 kilometers above Earth's surface. Because the electromagnetic energy absorbed by the ozone layer is converted to heat, air temperature generally increases with elevation in the stratosphere even as pressure continues to decrease. The mesosphere is above the stratosphere. Here, air temperatures decrease again with elevation to the coldest observed in the atmosphere. Next is the thermosphere, in which nitrogen and oxygen absorb short wavelength radiation, producing heat that leads to increasing temperatures with elevation. The thermosphere contains the ionosphere, where photoionization produces free ions. This can lead to the auroras. There is even a layer not shown in the image, the exosphere, that extends about 500 kilometers above Earth's surface. At the top of the exosphere, air molecules with sufficient energy can escape from Earth's gravitational pull. To summarize, air is a mixture of gases also containing vapors and aerosol particles. Dry air is composed of about 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% argon. Water vapor content in air can vary greatly from almost 0% to more than 10% in certain high temperature industrial operations. Lastly, the structure of the atmosphere is complex. The troposphere is the lowest layer where people live. It is only about 10 to 15 kilometers or 6 to 9 miles thick.